नमस्कार लेट मी वेलकम यू ऑल टू टूडे सेशन ऑफ लर्निंग डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ सिद्धार्थ प्ले टूडे वी विल हैव द डिस्कशन ऑन अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ सिद्धार्थ प्ले दैट इज द राइट हैंड टेक्निक एज वी नो द राइट हैंड प्रोड्यूस द साउंड एंड लेफ्ट हैंड actually modulates the sound changes the sound which we have discussed in few of our previous sessions the role of right hand and left hand so today we will discuss little bit in detail for the right hand technique first of all the right hand position and posture should be very um you know uh, proper and accurate so how as you see the arm this part is placed on the pumpkin side okay and the thumb is placed on the sidar body and we move our fingers like this to strum the string in two directions inward direction which is called da and out of the outward direction which is called ra so there are only two syllables for sita right hand technique one is da which is inward stroke and ra which is outward stroke and the posture and position of the right hand is very very important it is very specific way which you can see and it is very natural way right there is no uh you know stiffness in the right hand it is very free and natural and normal and the thumb is placed somewhere nearby this last fret the tar saptak ma fret nearby this position and the thumb never comes out of the sitar body because for moving the fingers in this way we need to have a strength and this thumb actually gives us the strength and thumb will be able to give us the strength only when it has some support so this sitar body gives the support to thumb and that support helps us to have the strength on your our thumb and with that strength we can move our finger unless and until there is some support and some base we can't move we will not get strength we can move like this but the strength we will not get so this is very important not to take the thumb away from the sitar body it should always be touching the sitar body so that right hand continuously gets the strength this is number 1 rule okay next the you see there are different joints in our hand starting from this joint then this joint which is kind of elbow joint then wrist joint okay these are the hinges by which we can fold in between we can't fold here we can't fold right these are the joints second joint third joint then the finger joint finger base joint right here you see the way i am moving so this is working as a hinge and i am moving like this next is this joint this joint okay so i i can move like this and last is this joint this joint what this this particular joint okay so how many joints are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 in our hand starting from here to finger we are having six joints so for playing sitar this joint does not play any role this joint also does not play any role because we don't play like this there is no movement like this while playing sitar there is some role minimal role of wrist joint particularly while playing jhala portion seedha jhala and ulta jhala there is little bit movement minimal movement okay this joint has more movement than this joint this joint has more movement than this joint this joint has more movement than this joint and the last joint this has most of the uh, you know movement so you see when we move like this so this this moves the most then this also moves this also moves 
this also moves this works like a device this entire thing works like a, like a device and machine so you don't have to think how to move your right hand your practice should be like that that your how to move the right hand it will be done through subconscious and conscious mind will only produce the music right so you don't need to think about how to produce sound it will be automatic so for that two things are important one is proper technique and second thing is with proper technique you need to have proper riyaz effective riyaz which is practice as pandit bhimsen joshi ji told once the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is practice right so the practice will be effective only when your technique is correct so proper technique with proper riyaz gives the result so we we are trying to understand the technique of right hand so hand should not be the wrist should not be tilted like this in the right side or it should not be tilted like this no additional no extra pressure to move this kind of angles it should be proper you see from here to here it is kind of straight there is no bend and in my opinion for that reason the misra should be little bit left aligned if you face like this it should be little bit left aligned because your hand is like this and it is easier to have the stroke on main string like this okay and the position of the wrist is also very important if it is too high it will be facing chikari so other strings will be st get strummed more for like not like that so few people play like this but it is not effective we need to have less noise of the other sound and the main string or the baj ka tar or the nayaki tar should have the most of the sound and uh, in our style gandhar gandhar pancham style in particular the joda string also gets strummed a little in 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 the in the background as if the as we can think as the as the main string as the vocalist's voice and the joda string as the sound of the tanpura so the tanpura sound should not be louder than the vocalist's voice that is the bass line similarly the sound of the joda string should not overlap or should not be louder than the main string so joda string only should beautify the sound of the main string it should not overshadow so that's why the position of the wrist is also very important so that the when we move the misra it should strum the main string the most and then a little bit joda string and no other string should be strummed i am talking about when we play bowls or tans not strumming about strumming the chikari string just the main string this is very important to place the wrist in proper position so that the sound is effective it should not be too loud joda should joda string this string should not sound too loud it should be just you know in proper proportion to beautify the overall sound and we should not throw our hand or you know like this the stroke should be adequate and proper just to allow the string to vibrate for the advanced stages i will do probably few additional sessions for the advanced uh, lessons advanced techniques for tonal modulation and sound dynamics because most of the time we follow certain angle certain strength but for creating certain effects uh, we change the tonal quality tonality by moving our hand either cross the string from here to here because the sound changes once we move our finger near the bridge it sounds something some 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 way here it sounds some way if we strum here it sounds some way also that is one point and also the angle of stroke also um creates different impact so i am not going into that details at this point uh, we are discussing the basic uh, technique so most of the time the way we should play a student should practice i am discussing that so it should be 
this is da and this is ra so in da stroke joda sound will joda string will sound will get strummed a little bit but in ra stroke it should not because if in ra stroke joda string comes first and in da stroke main string comes first so if while ra stroke if we strum joda string then anyway its sound will be more than main string which is not desired that's why only in da stroke we should strum joda string not during the ra okay this is second point and a uh, few people ask um, how to stroke like you is it through the thing uh, mizra tip or is it you know we should you know uh, put our uh, finger in a uh, little inside and then strum so again all these are different techniques in different situations for different requirement of sound production we we follow different techniques for but for the students the way you should practice is your you you should have enough inter intersection enough um overlap like with the mizrab surface and the string surface not only for with the tip if you just do with the tip then the sound will not be profound and you will not be able to produce loud sound so our intention should be to produce loud sound not very soft sound a low sound low volume the volume should be high and at the same time the sound should not be rough and harsh it should not you know create pain in a, while listening in our ear it should not be it should not be that hard it should be pleasing to the ears that is the first criteria and at the same time it should be loud enough it should be bold and profound so there is a very fine balance which we need to understand initially it might be little difficult to visualize or understand speculate what i am saying but as you start playing then you will understand so let me produce some basic syllables like da and ra in open mainstream first this is the explanation now what i will do i will play um uh, this pattern first eight syllables per note then six syllables per note then four syllables per note then two syllables per note then one syllable per note which is basically comes to support so and it is very important to play with either metronome or tabla to maintain the consistency in the speed so the speed should not fluctuate when we have the consecutive da and ra stroke it should have equal gaps in between so it is very important to play with some tabla app or proper tabla or metronome so i am fixing this tabla in 100 bits per minute for the demonstration purpose and it is not too fast so that you can understand Descending, arohan, and then avrohan. From lower notes to higher notes, it is arohan or aroha or ascending, and from higher notes to lower notes, it is descending or avrohan or avroha. Now I will do six syllables each note. One, two, three, four, one. 
the entire thing in double speed. So I was playing in double speed there of this theka. Now I am playing four times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, one beat in the tabla and four beats in my sitar. Okay. So in this way, you can try fixing certain tempo and try to match your right hand movements with it. Before actually going with tabla, first you need to make it proper without tabla. And once you can play in consistent speed, then only turn on tabla and try to match with the speed, with that tempo. Otherwise, if you don't have the symmetry and consistency in the tempo itself, then you should not go with tabla. First, you need to practice without tabla and make it. Uh, you know, equal gaps between two consecutive strokes. Once you achieve that, then turn on tabla and try to match with it. So this is the very basic practice, and we have certain other right hand techniques and bowls, which will we will actually discuss in our next episodes. So please stay tuned, and if you have not subscribed to our channel. Please subscribe to get this kind of videos, which are informative and educative. And stay tuned and stay musical, and keep on practicing. Thank you.